I'm now joined by uh, MPs uh, Pasco Mbabazi of uh, Bowekula constituency and uh, Frank Kavuye Kassanda South to discuss the situation on the ground. Gentlemen, uh, welcome to the program. Thank you. Let me begin with Mr. Honorable Frank Kavuye, the MP for Kassanda South. Just take us up to bring us up to speed rather with uh, the situation on the ground. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning to our viewers. Uh, my name is Frank Kawie, the MP for Kassanda South. I'm also the Shadow Minister for the Youth and uh, Children Affairs in Uganda. Mm. Uh, you all know about the lockdown that is ongoing in Kassanda and Mubende. And allow me to first uh, send a comfort message to all our victims, all those that have been tested positive of Ebola, and also uh, my condolence to those that have lost families due to the Ebola outbreak. Uh, our region was put on a lockdown or our districts, the two districts. And this was by surprise, because uh, at this time we didn't expect a lockdown again. Yeah. We are just trying to recover from the COVID era and the lockdown during the, uh, that we faced during COVID. Uh, you know what affected uh, our schools, uh, the breakdown of our health sector, the breakdown of the economy entirely as a, as a country and the world at large. And uh, at this time, we expected maybe there would be better measures of how we can send information first to our people such that they get to know about the, uh, the, uh, the existence of the Ebola outbreak. Because even if you put them in a lockdown without them knowing what is really going on, they might take it like uh, maybe the lockdown is put on different grounds mm -hmm. and there is an ADN agenda that is ongoing on ground. Uh, we are trying to see that maybe this time around, as it was witnessed during the COVID uh, lockdowns, where security agencies and uh, other such, uh, sister agencies with, uh, with whom they work, uh, how they work to enforce the presidential directives. This time round, they should not come back with the same cruelness, with the same uh, violations as they did. Because yeah. in the moment uh, um, General Museveni left the showroom or the media room last night on Saturday, the enforcement started. And these were witnessed by uh, red top men putting on our military uniform, the police, beating up people on the streets who were still operating because it was uh, an emergency uh, and uh, people were still working or they, they were on their duties. Mm -hmm. But when the, moment, the moment the president said it, the police and the military in Mubende, Kassanda, started to enforce. Mm -hmm. This left many people with bruises and uh, some are still uh, treating the injuries they got and this is putting a worry on many of our people that maybe this time around it might also be the same case. Remember when Ebola, f uh, f when uh, COVID first hit, the first cases, or the first death cases that were registered, mm -hmm. most were f threats or were those caused by security agencies. Where we saw LDC, L LDC personnel shooting at the people, uh, hiding in the skin of enforcing the, co the COVID direct Directives. Directive. And that is what we are worried about right now because if we are, we are seeing a lockdown that has been put and the powers that have been given to security to enforce this, we might find our people going back to jail, uh, we might find our people being beaten again, we might find their businesses going down or cracking down again because right now uh, one of the worries that we have, Kassanda and Mwende and Mitiana. Mm. We, we are going to, uh, it is a national program where our students are going to do their final exams. Okay, but we shall of course uh, be coming to the exams and uh, mm. any other measures or programs that are being rolled out uh, by multi-sectoral uh, entities, but allow me give an opportunity to Honorable uh, Pasco Mbabazi from uh, Buwekula uh, constituency to give us uh, uh, an update on what's, on this, this what's the situation on the ground in uh, your constituency in terms of numbers of the those identified as having contracted Ebola, but unfortunately also those that have died. Thank you, Mr. Kuris. Uh, allow me also to greet our viewers. Uh, good morning. Uh, it's very absurd that uh, the, 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 my constituency, that is Wekura, mm. it has become an epicenter when you talk of uh, this outbreak. Uh, it's now like one month since this outbreak happened, but so far, more than 20 people have died. Mm. I recall very well. Mm, it was around July. Mm -hmm. I raised this issue on the floor of Parliament. I was calling upon the Minister of Health to come in and assess the situation because during that time, very many people were dying, but you could not know 
what was killing them. As you know, this was in July. Yes, around July, towards the August. Yeah, people started dying, village to village, and to me, I was counting more than 25 by then. Uh, not until the ministry came in after g uh, gathering a report from the regional referral hospital mm. that someone died with the signs and symptoms of, of this disease. Uh, then the ministry came in and they confirmed uh, one case eventually mm. uh, that person died. It was a 24-year-old male. He uh, was youthful because he was doing his businesses around the places of Hongabano and the uh, gold fields. Mm. Uh, that is Chitanda God Mines. Uh, from there, uh, the ministry came in and uh, they, they put up an isolation center at a regional referral hospital in Mubende. But this was not enough because when we visited the place, we found uh, at the emergence point, it's where they had put an isolation center. So under mm. the guidance of the minister, General Luther Cheng, they had to shift and put this place to another place. Uh, and also uh, in my constituency in the sub-county called Madudu sub-county, mm. uh, they have identified another, uh, another isolation center at Madudu Health Center 3. Uh, and the, uh, as of now, structures are being put up. The isolation tents, uh, we have received the beds and mattresses from the Ministry of uh, Health. Uh, I, I'm hopeful mm. uh, with the effort, to, because when you reach at the ground, uh, these other health pa uh, other partners, like a, a World Health Organization, World Food Program, uh, IDI, and other agencies like a UNICEF, mm. they have come in. They've come in. So I'm sure the situation will be contained. However, after the declaration of the lockdown, the law enforcers came in with the, uh, I can call it in a harsh way. Mm. Because by that time, uh, I was in a restaurant, I was watching His Excellency, he was giving his speech. Yeah. But as soon as he left, then the security personnel was swung in. Well, now we can't discount their actions because the president said the lockdown and measures begin with immediate effect. Automatic. So that was more like an order, but that is something, of course, that can be debated on how enforcement over lockdown and other measures can be conducted when information flow is still not sufficient or hasn't reached the people. But you speak about something that uh, opens my mind to the fact that could we be dealing with an Ebola outbreak that occurred as many as three months before the official announcement on September the 20th? It's my thinking. So most of the people that died within that, uh, within the old constituency, you're, you're pretty speculative, but I want us to go move away from that. We are not, we are not uh, experts in terms of uh, medi medical, in the medical field to say they died of Ebola or not, but the symptoms were. Yes, of course, uh, because uh, according to the information, the ministry that is getting from the community mm. using the village health team, the VHTs, yeah. they tell us that the, the, these people had the similar symptoms and mm. the signs, but we, 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 can't, we can't confirm that these people died of Ebola. Mm. Uh, first of all, I'm not taking on that side. Of course. But uh, uh, it's evident after these people dying and after my report when the ministry came in it eventually discovered that ebola was where was in the place so uh, I, I think there was a lax stay mm. in the, in, in, in the works of, of the ministry of, of health okay. so I, I would call upon the ministry to come in and do more sensitization because mm. as my colleague has put it uh, you find the, the information flow is still shallow mm. and we members of parliament have not been given a platform to sensitize our people actually when we go there we we, we, we use our own money to buy air time on radios so that we can pass through the information to reach our people whose money do you want to use of course the government must must prepare for this the ministry should be given money. Mm. Uh, 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 last time I read in papers, mm. the minister was requesting for a 68 billion. Mm. Where will this money go? Okay. Yes. Uh, and given that we have agencies that have come in, 
they also have budgets. Mm. So we want to work hand in hand uh, as the ministry does its part. Let us leaders at all levels be involved. Oh, now I understand it. The plea is for other actors to come on board so they can work Absolutely. hand in hand with you. Absolutely. I thought you wanted to receive a new trash no. of money no, 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 <laughs> to, be, <laughs> to be able to roll out uh, this because no. uh, I see members uh, of parliament must go to radios Mr. themselves Police. to mm -hmm. address the people. Mr. Police, you know, mm. these people voted us and they trust us. The information we give them they will take they it. They will take it. Yes. Uh, and, and also, actually, uh, some yeah. information. Yes. Uh, you know, today the minister might be in charge, mm. and we might be having uh, the head of the task force uh, that is trying to enforce mm. the Ebola directives. But the people on ground want to listen to the voice of their leaders, because mm. in uh, in us we represent their values, That's and in, and to them we send back the information that helps them to survive, especially during these hard times. So I think it is of importance that the leaders at all levels be involved and put uh, at the front of fighting this outbreak, so that we can help our people to go back and normalize the situation and they start to work. Because at every cost or whatever cost they face, it still comes back to us, the leaders. Mm. They will come and cry to us and inform us about their, uh, the, the breakdown of their businesses, the breakdown of, area of the health sectors in, in, in their regions, uh, everything that will go missed in during this lockdown, it is us, the local leaders or the leaders on ground that will be given this information and we shall bear the burden to yeah. see that at least we hope these people to recover and go back to full potential. So I think it is of importance that mm. uh, the leaders, uh, all the elected leaders, okay. are also put. Uh, that's a valid point, but I expect that uh, within the measures that have been rolled out as part of this lockdown, members of parliament and other eminent leaders within the districts have passes so you can access radio stations, you can go to some of these community-based uh, you know, BMEZA yeah. or there are sort of boom mics that are put in markets mm. or places where people convene so that you can use them too. Are you doing this? Do you have uh, car stickers that you can be able to move around just like leaders were able to move around during the COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, Mr. Chris, we haven't known uh, yet because uh, according to the to, to the address the, His Excellency gave mm. to the nation, uh, he categorized the only w one sector, mm. health sector, health. To, yeah, to, to, to be allowed to move move the permit. See. However, uh, today the cabinet is sitting because today is Monday. Mm. I'm hopeful that he, some stringent measures are going to be looked into, mm. and we expect more information after today's meeting in cabinet. So I'm hopeful we leaders and the other service providers may be given a chance at least to move. Uh, like uh, um, Honorable Kabir put it that uh, students are beginning to write their final exams today. Mm. Uh, we expect uh, s s s some chance to be given at least to these students use border border. Mm. Some people move long distances to look for schools. And I expect His Excellency also to, to look into this because this is a promotional term. Uh, these people should be given a chance to sit for their examinations. All right. Uh, Honorable Frank Kabuye, when Honorable Pascal Mbabazi revealed to us just a few minutes ago that uh, people were dying as early as February, it took me a little bit aback. We could be dealing with the crisis far greater uh, than uh, we have uh, envisaged or been told. Within your constituency, are there cases like that? No, I have Did not. Did you notice anything like that? No, we don't have cases of mm. death, but uh, like the dying rates mm. were high in uh, July. In the June. communities. Yeah, in the communities. Mm. That is evident, but we, d we could not anticipate that because most of the people who passed on were in hospitals mm. and receiving treatment. So they could just be brought back for burial and uh, without any report from the medical personnel that maybe these people were related to. Uh, or the cause of their death was related to Ebola mm. until when one case was, was registered in Madudu. But uh, for the rest, we had barriers. Every day we bury in, in our constituencies. Mm. Every day we have cases of burial. And uh, I think that's why maybe people g were not so scared mm. about these deaths when we are, they had the, the numbers increase, but they thought maybe there, there was some witchcraft, as it was said earlier, for those that were in Madud. Yeah, great. That brings me to our next question, the mindset within the people. The president was very uh, dismayed as he went on lamenting in the very first address about the fact that uh, uh, people go to witch doctors or traditional medicine men, there is a tendency to 
not to understand the difference between these, whether you're talking about a traditional healer or uh, a messenger of the local gods, or whatever it is. But what are you doing? Of course, before, I, I don't want you to lament, the lockdown is only 36 hours, or rather 48. Before that, changing people's mindset. When you noticed that there were deaths within the community, what did you do? How did you tackle this particular issue? Oh, it was a case of, I've come, we've buried, I've talked, and I've gone. I uh, Thank you, Mr. Prisi. Uh, on that issue, mm. of course, when people started dying, we were all shocked because... It was a strange moment to us. We could not understand why people were dying. Maybe some of us who believe in Jesus, we thought maybe God was annoyed, but not until <laughs> after when I made an alarm mm. and the, the ministry came in as I've put it in the first place. Mm. Then we, we discovered that there was something going wrong. However, uh, as you said, the, the mindset of our people mm. For them, they thought, because uh, there is a, a, a village called Chiruanyi, and uh, today the minister is visiting this village. Mm. Actually, people have been adamant. They, not, uh, they do not want to comply with the SOPs, uh, the, 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 the guidelines by the medics. And uh, last time when someone died, uh, even some bullets were shot to uh, displace people so that they can allow the medics uh, take over and bury mm. in an organized manner according to the guidelines. Uh, some of our people thought maybe there was witchcraft, as the president said, because, uh, you know, in Uganda they said, Munyanja, I just hear. Mm. So that rumor was there, that someone went in the lake looking for where it, and he had boats, he had boat vehicles, he had been constructed. So they said, now, this man, took our people to the lake and that's why they are dying but it was mythical mm. you, because you cannot uh, prove it uh, and actually some leaders were telling me please as you bring in ministry uh, tell te, 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 te the ministry to come also with the witch doctors so you see the mindset <laughs> of the people eh? so we started slowly engaging the village <laughs> that's team, interesting eh? and the chairperson's LOC1, chairperson's LOC2 uh, creating uh, these task forces uh, right away from the district up to the sub county level and now people are starting to change their mindset mm -hmm. they are now believe that uh, the disease is within them within them yes honorable Kabuye, what is the state of health public health infrastructure within the districts uh, I will speak I will first speak about uh, the state in Cassandra mm -hmm. uh, as Cassandra district we don't have uh, an hospital we are operating under health center force and uh, three up to two that is trying to help out uh, to give our people medication or first aid mm. during this breakout. Uh, on Saturday, before the president's directives, I was in Cassandra North, uh, that is one of Bonsamba's constituency. Mm. We, had, uh, we had some games he had organized and they were, we won the finals. But I interacted with some medical personnel who informed me that even them, they are scared because they are at the front of fighting to see that everyone in Cassandra is safe. Mm. But even themselves are not safe because they lack the protective gears that can help them maybe to protect them their, their lives when they are trying to give service to our people. And most of the cases we get as Cassandra, we cannot handle them. We refer them to Mubende mm. uh, for, for future treatment or for further treatment. So I look at the health sector in the two districts, and I think it is high time government reacted to this and uh, put up structures that can give that health that is needed to our people. The, uh, the COVID era was at least an awakening call mm. to inform government that you're sleeping on the duty of building a strong and a sound, uh, vibrant health sector in the country. This should not be put in only case areas where we have seen Ebola cases because uh, we have witnessed Ebola cases in Luelo. Mm. We have had contacts. Uh, we have got information about that. Someone who moved up to Luelo and the other lady, uh, he died, he passed on from Chiludu. So those cases there, that means the contacts also need that special treatment. Mm. The government would have woke up earlier to give uh, or to build a sound and strong health sector in the country and that is our worry because right now as Cassandra we have one, di one, ambu one district ambulance. That ambulance has to move for three constituencies because we have Cassandra North, mm -hmm. we have Bukuya 
and we have Cassandra South. Yeah. And it has been a duty of leaders, the MPs you have seen, it has now been like a, a, a function or a ceremony. Every MP that is elected, he wants to buy an ambulance. But this is a role of government, and this has pushed government to sleep on its duty. I think government should wake up in this time. We had the COVID era, it challenged us. Now we have Ebola. It shouldn't challenge us with some simple tools that should be in place for the f for the health of our people. For example, we can't be crying of protective gears mm -hmm. when we've heard of the uh, of the outbreak from September. This is October. We are still crying about protective gears that could be given to the. Uh, the medical personnel, not the persons mm. that are living in the communities, but the medical personnel, they also fear to give out services. That's why many people are dying in their houses, and we shall not notice this. All right, talking about the lockdown, before we transition how the rollout of the exams will be uh, today, and uh, of course uh, the days that uh, will be uh, coming. You've spoken earlier about the fact there is Mamba, those uh, military trucks are deployed and apparently it looks like a war zone me i wouldn't discount the military for deploying heavily as they have deployed after hearing what you said and the fact that uh, people have been dying as early as july don't you think it's necessary that no movements whatsoever uh, go on or take place in order to protect uh, the greater population Absolutely, it is very important to curtail people from moving because we know Ebola, uh, you contract Ebola through direct contact. Mm -hmm. So there is no way you can, you can stop <laughs> Ebola unless when you stopped people from moving. Mm -hmm. However, uh, first of all, I would like to appreciate the efforts of His Excellency for fighting such outbreaks because you can see the way uh, Uganda contained the uh, the, the COVID-19 and uh, I'm hopeful we shall also vanquish this. Uh, however, uh, the, 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 the locals or oh, our people were caught off guard. They were not prepared. Remember we are on the weekend mm. uh, and the, here the, the, the message comes that uh, there is no more movement using border borders, using the taxis, and all other, other sorts of uh, transportation. Now, think someone who moves over five kilometers uh, to, to reach his or her garden, how will this person survive? For us, we are not against, or oh, myself, I'm not against these measures, mm. but these me measures should also be in place, but also catering for the welfare of our people. Because now people are going to die in the houses if at all anything is not changed. So more so, mm. uh, we have hard to reach areas like in my constituents. I have a sub-county that connects to Kasanda, mm. Changkwanzi, and Shiboga. It's called Utologo. Roads are poor, but uh, some people, mainly those who are on ARV services, move using border borders from uh, Kanyogoga Parish come to the Mubende Regional Referral Hospital mm. to have their uh, their medical services. And now border borders are cut off. Everything for movement is cut off. Now, how do you think these people are going to, to have uh, a, a living? Okay. M more so, we may look at Ebola, mm. but also these other diseases mm. will come in and kill our people. Because now all the eyes and the efforts are being put on Ebola, but leaving aside these other diseases. Uh, like uh, Madudu Health Center 3 being an isolation center, now people are going to shine away from coming to have services. I expect them to use other health centers like uh, Chiyun Health Center 3 and uh, Chiruma Health Center 2, but they are in a dire state. Okay. So I call upon the government right. mm -hmm. to come in at least and look into these structures and boom, the, All right. uh, Ebola may come as a problem, but I want also government to use it to, use it as an to opportunity have a look to improve. at health services mm. in Mwende district. All right, Honorable so Kawuye, just uh, as we prepare to transition into a break and then return and uh, delve a little bit more uh, keenly into how the UNEB uh, 
and uh, the UCE uh, exam shall be conducted. What is the hybrid blueprint mm -hmm. that you can offer mm -hmm. the Ministry of Health right now on how to deal with how people can be confined, others late to move, at what point and in what particular mode. You're, they are your people, you know them, you know their gardening patterns, you know their socialization patterns. How can you advise right now? Because the ministry will come in and to come with its own way of doing things. Uh, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, to draw you back on the question you had uh, put to Honorable Pasco mm. about the enforcement, uh, yeah. I just had a comment about the enforcement. You know, uh, the energy and the strength and the power that is used by the security agencies sometimes forces our people to think otherwise about these directives. For example, I have this picture of this man. I don't know if you can zoom it out. Uh, it is very difficult to inform that man that the police and the military were enforcing directives of Ebola. Yeah, just to be clear, the picture that I'm being shown here by Honorable Kabuye is of a man who has uh, what I could estimate to be about 35 lashes of the cane on his back. He's heavily bruised, but of course it is a picture that might be disturbing to you. So you will depend on my ability to visualize and tell you exactly what is here. He's a man whose back is severely bruised. And the claim, according to the MP, is that he was brutalized and beaten by the security forces as they try to enforce the lockdown there. So it is very difficult to inform such a person that it is really true that uh, they are trying to enforce Ebola presidential directives. Mm. So I think, uh, for me, that's where I don't agree with the deployment, the heavy deployment and mm. the work all the way military and police tries to conduct themselves as they try to enforce uh, the directives, especially about these uh, endemics or epidemics that uh, break out and uh, try to take our people's lives. Uh, back to the, to the point uh, about how I can advise the mm. ministry on how they can give sensitization to yeah. our people and uh, also information to protect the, uh, their businesses and to, co to curb the spread or the movement of the, vi the virus to, from one person to another. Uh, you know, we have a disturbing, uh, one of the directives was very disturbing. Uh, the, the, the general, as he was speaking, mm -hmm. was like, the people in the mines of Kassanda and Mwende shall be allowed to operate. These mines be having people uh, like 600 persons per, per mine. Mm. And these people are working and they are coming from different areas or villages. But you're, you're, you're telling us that you cannot allow a church that can accommodate 30 people or 40, because that, that is the capacity in our villages. Mm. They accommodate 30 or 40. And these people mainly come from one village or one parish. Okay. So at least if government could allow the intermovement within like the use of public uh, means within the uh, sub-counties or within the parishes or the districts, that would be better. So that the people in Kassand can use their border borders to move to go to their gardens because mm -hmm. you find people having their homesteads in the town centers, but when they are, they are doing their agriculture in like 8 kilometers or 10 kilometers from where they reside from, that means they need to still do be, uh, agriculture because if they don't do that, their gardens will be weeded and uh, we shall end up also crying for food like other regions that are not endowed with uh, good soils and uh, good rains. So I think that if the government could revise that, they allow the intermovement within districts uh, so that people can continue to do business and to do their agricultural duties. All right. Uh, thank you for that uh, submission, Honorable Frank Kabuye, MP for Kassanda South. We are also speaking to Honorable Pasco Mabazi, uh, the MP for Buwekula County. And of course, uh, this conversation will continue after the break. We are talking Ebola and how the lockdown will be affecting the communities in the two districts that are currently under lockdown. Do stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back from that short break. We're glad you're still with us. And uh, if you're just joining Morning at 10 TV, uh, thank you very much. You're welcome on board. We are discussing the lockdown in Kassanda and uh, Mubende uh, district that was announced by the president on uh, Saturday as one of the latest measures to ensure that a halt to the spread of Ebola is effected. Now, there are concerns. And of course, uh, uh, some people, including residents, have complained about the overzealousness of the security forces in conducting the enforcement of the lockdown. Some say the police has brutally uh, beaten them. 
in uh, effort to ensure that they either do not move to places that are not designated or even uh, be able to go back and uh, not go about their business. Uh, members of parliament uh, from uh, the region are complaining too that perhaps this is hitting a mosquito with a hammer interesting but of course we are trying to understand exactly what is on the ground mps uh, joining us for the discussion here uh, frank kabuye who is uh, representing Cassandra south as well as pasco mbabazi from buwekula county let's now uh, return to the discussion that we were having but to transition slightly to help our audiences understand what is the economy of bubende and Cassandra districts what are the major activities and how does a lockdown impede uh, progress or if there wasn't a lockdown how would the uh, business precipitate the spread of Ebola because there are two issues here mm -hmm. if for example there are markets what markets did you say those are seasonal, seasonal market markets. seasonal markets or Butale Mibur. Or Butale Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> those markets where there's a lot of people coming from other regions of bringing goods I do not know whether you would love that kind of uh, interaction to continue in light <laughs> of what is happening because that mm. would precipitate uh, the spread of Ebola. However, if it doesn't happen, the amount of business that is halted, just bring us up to speed with the economy, the major activities done, and uh, how this is going to impact, especially the lockdown, how it's going to impact the economies there. First, Cassandra. Yeah, uh, I'll speak about the economy in the Cassandra mm. district as well. Uh, for example, there are two comments I would like to make about uh, gold mine or the yeah. mining sector yes. and also other business that are done by the locals. Because mm. now for the mine, we, have a, we might be thinking of another reason why they were left to operate. Because uh, in 2019, we, we received a directive mm. from the president uh, uh, telling the people, for example, those who are in the Chisita mines in Bukuya, mm. to evict that place and go back to where they came from. And these people are not going to face any compensations. Mm. And they were said that uh, it was uh, stipulated that the mines are going to be developed by some Chinese investors that are going to, to give us a better exploitation of this gold and uh, we stop eating the Bukunkumuka as he described it. Mm. But uh, in 2021, 2020, 2021, there comes a man, a brother to General Museveni, Mr. Sodo, into the mines. And now he's running the mines. And this time around, we are asking ourselves, why was it specific that it had to come to the comments of the president? During the COVID era, we didn't get any comment about the mines, yet they remained operating. But this time, he was very specific that uh, the mines in Kassan and, and Mubende shall be left to operate as they operate. They, 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 they operate under the SOPs, mm. of which ma the major SOP is testing for temperature, of which we don't believe that that is the major uh, sign. So it is sufficient enough to it, yeah, it is help not you understand, to understand that the person's is not, state of health. Uh, is not having Ebola or not. Mm. And we also look at a situation whereby these people are going to, uh, like for example, Kassanda and uh, Karamoja are the two districts in Uganda mm. that are that have the major or the most gold deposits in the new findings. Mm. And now we are facing the same thing. We are, we are starting to relate and think about maybe there is another agenda that is ongoing on ground that, is, that, that, that they don't want to disclose Which to agenda us. is that? Oh, you've or heard what? of what happened in Karamoja. And I don't think it was just about Katora. I don't story. want to speculate. You're yeah, the, we, yeah, you're the man yeah. on the ground. Yeah, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you what is on ground. Because yeah. after we lost the mines, we know what, uh, what he, how it hit our economy. Because mm. people who had started to do business, develop uh, the, the area, now are now begging for food. Mm. Because everything they had worked through the mines was taken. Is when this the same scenario that is playing out in Bowekula? Uh, I wouldn't want to let maybe people think that uh, there is a decoy that the uh, government is planning or an undercover mission. Mm. But uh, to speak the fact, Ebola is on ground and is killing people as uh, I'm talking now. Yeah. We lost yesterday a doctor who was uh, treating a suspected Ebola patient who also died last week. But yesterday the doctor died and they took the samples. We hope to receive the results, but uh, signs and symptoms indicate that uh, he died of uh, Ebola. That is uh, now the late uh, Dr. Walgembe, mm. commonly known as Kabeja. So, uh, to me, very unfortunate. It's yeah. very unfortunate, but uh, I want to assure our people that uh, 
if uh, we comply with the, the guidelines given to us by the medics, mm. we, we shall win this battle. Back to the main point, the economy in my, my place and in Mubende as general, we do agriculture mm. mostly. Mm. And you know, agriculture, you deal with the bulk uh, commodities. So you, you need a border border, you need a, a motorcycle, you need the, any means of transport mm. to transport your products. And now, uh, this uh, this policy, I think, is going to curtail most of the business doers because mm. you find someone has put up a, a store and is dealing in a produce. We are approaching harvesting season, so a lot of losses are going to be incurred, and more so some small businesses. People had already uh, gotten loans from different banks, and with this lo lockdown of 21 days. It's only cries. So, um, more so, we have also gold. Mm. Like uh, Honorable Kabi has put it, that Cassandra, you know, Cassandra was carved, carved out of Mobende. Out of Mobende, uh, sure. Of recent. Mm. So, we share the deposits of, uh, of gold. Like uh, Chitanda is at close border with the Cassandra district. So, uh, my prayer is government should put uh, a keen eye to protect people from land grabbers, land grabbers, because I'm optimistic by the end of this lockdown, we shall have issues with the land as it was in COVID. We, 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 we can't say that it's government, mm. but also people with their money, they come and connive with the corrupt officials at the district. Mm. You find the land is a public land, but has been issued to a private person, yet the early settlers had already requested it to have the title in their names. More like uh, so they wanted first refusal. This has been rampant both mm. in Kassanda and in my district of Mubende. So and, and, uh, and uh, earlier, uh, mm. we, we had put the blame on Mubende. Because <laughs> <laughs> we, we thought maybe Mbende, since the headquarters are far from Kassan, mm -hmm. these guys are operating in the way that they don't care about us. That's why in Kassan that was so rampant. Because as you've said, uh, there is some investor, a big man in the country, and also, uh, I can say a pastor, who tried to acquire 27 square miles in one of my sub-counties, that is Manyogaseka. Mm. And that land was, uh, was said to be a forest reserve. To him, the title was issued. When the, the then the legislator uh, tried to enforce and also the communities woke up, the title was called off and it was cancelled. But when the residents tr tried to request for and applied for the title to be put in their names, mm. it was rejected at the district and also at the national level that that is a forest reserve. But when, when you go, when you go on deep search, there's someone already trying to process titles on that land. That means uh, the issue of land grabbing in Kassan and Mubende, we should deal with it as the leaders, as most the community. Uh, most in this lockdown. In this lockdown. Because lo they take advantage of uh, using the lax stay in government agencies and the leaders focusing on one thing mm. and the, 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 they make the diversions, you end up... Uh, finding that is interesting. In that is interesting. On yeah. in, in our effort to learn uh, what is on ground in terms of uh, the outbreak of Ebola, we are also learning that there's a lot more challenges that the lockdown could bring, including what, of course, the honourable uh, members of parliament are lamenting about land grabbing. But let's not uh, ensure the discussion goes into an chartered waters for now land grabbing can be a discussion for another day let's now go to how our candidates are coping especially when they begin to write their papers should be around about the next uh, 25 minutes that is uh, 9 a.m uh, the writing of papers that will roll on across the country that is with mathematics paper for the Uganda Certificate of Education. How many candidates are within your communities and uh, what have been the challenges? I do not know whether uh, in those that grappled with the effects of COVID had recovered enough to be able to get into another uh, mini lockdown, so to speak. How are they coping? You Have you gone around, done any sensitization, especially to uh, some of these candidates? Have you even 
talk to them in terms of uh, uh, what is usually done uh, before they do their exams? Yeah, uh, we, try, we try to talk to them. Mm. We did their talking. Uh, we visited the schools uh, on their prom parties because they invited us. Mm. And we went there physically where we managed to go. And uh, we sent representatives where we couldn't reach mm. due to the tight schedules. But uh, for the people's or the students getting back mm. to on board to be prepared to do the exams, at least that we had tried. We had uh, informed our par the parents that it is not a du only a duty, but it is a role and a responsibility they must fulfill. Yeah. Because there is no prepared time for someone to learn. They should always do their best, even in the hardest times. Even if it was a war and we needed uh, the students to go to school, they should go because in them we see uh, future leaders, in them we see the future doctors that will give treatment in such circumstances in the case we get them back uh, in uh, future times. But uh, to look at the situation as they are going to do their exams, I'm worried and I'm thinking about the students who have to move 10 kilometers to go to their schools, mm. and right now, they cannot use a border border mm. or a, priv a public mean of transport, neither yeah. pri a private one, in case it may be the dad had a car or what. Because, uh, for example, we have schools that we share. For example, we have uh, a school in Mitiana, mm. close to the border of Cassandra, and it is having a big population in one of my sub-counties, that is Mians, that is neighboring with uh, with, uh, with the Mitiana. Mm. But I'm looking at the situation where those students have to move through the swamps, because we have swamps that are bordering us or dividing the boundaries between Kassanda and, and Mitiana, mm. and these are the, the same paths through which students have to pass okay. to go to their schools to do their exams. And this might be a challenging moment. That's why we're like, if government could recall this and give a permit maybe to the students to be to lifted be to, to, to be given yeah a, a ride on a border oh, okay. border or to be put uh, public means to be put in schools mm. with stickers of those students because these students be coming from one school That's right. and in one region oh, okay. some schools in our in Cassandra don't have uh, centers they just have uh, they just hire space in neighboring districts or neighboring schools mm. whereby they need to move on board like uh, you find a school having over 100 students and these students have to foot and walk uh, like 20 or 10 kilometers so i think the district can come in and put maybe a bylaw according to what is benefiting our community and what can help our people so that we get this done in uh, all right honorable possible. pasco babazi you're gonna wrap this discussion as for us and uh, what's your take on uh, the students uh, rollout of the exam today and uh, the difficulties they could be facing and how it can be resolved first of all allow me to wish them success and the best uh, in their finals mm. as they sit for mathematics paper today uh, it's a challenging moment uh, because when the most of the parts are rural based and uh, this takes us back uh, oh, to look okay. at uh, the, 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 the income status of our people. Mm. Majority can afford border borders to transport uh, their children to, to different schools. Now that uh, they are banned from uh, uh, being used as a, a transportation means, it will be a, difficult. It, it will be definitely difficult. However, it will look uh, very absurd to find uh, various cases uh, where students uh, shall have been arrested because of using border borders. For me, I think this is a self explanatory factor, or it is evident that uh, a student shouldn't even need to carry mm. a, a, a anything like a permit. Okay. Because a student has an ID, yes. he or she has a bag or, 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 or on his back. Honorable. So to, to any person, I, 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 it's viable that yeah. someone is going to school. I think they should be left. They should be left. Uh, and, and, and All right, what we're seeing are some of the pictures of uh, what's going on in uh, schools across uh, the city. We shall now go to our man, uh, Stephen Mbide, who is, uh, of course, uh, covering uh, this exercise, the uh, rollout of uh, the Uganda uh, Certificate of uh, Education uh, exams uh, today. A very good morning, uh, Stephen Mbide. Good morning, Stephen. Uh, Stephen, can you hear me? 
there's a lot, of course, uh, going on. Uh, let the pictures roll. All right, we do seem to have uh, a little bit of uh, sound glitches there in uh, uh, reaching and being able to hear uh, Stephen Mbide give us an update on uh, what is exactly uh, going on. We know what exactly is going on, but how and uh, where it is uh, transpiring. And of course, it's the rollout of the UCE. And there you can see some students entering. But for now, let's uh, uh, go to Ivan K. Walinyolo, who is also ready with an update on what's happening in his uh, area. Uh, good morning, Ivan. Well, thank you very much, Chris and Priscilla. I am coming to you from Entebbe Senior Secondary School here in Entebbe Municipality, Waxo District. It's a beautiful morning when we know, of course, the senior four candidates are expecting their mathematics paper one, well, that's UNEB. And uh, any time from now, they will be getting it from a general picture I've had from the district education offices that uh, there are no challenges where maybe schools have denied candidates to sit for these examinations. But just like you see behind me, uh, the staff at the school are prepared preparing uh, some of the learners here, but I'm told uh, senior fours are uh, somewhere in the class taking their parting shots uh, ahead of the examination that is uh, coming. Of course, over 200 will be sitting the examination from this uh, school, but I just want to get a general picture of what the preparations are like with the uh, deputy head teacher of the school, that's Isaac Baguma, to just paint for us a picture. And thank you very much for joining me on Morning at NTV. You're welcome, and you're most welcome to NTV Secondary School. What are the preparations like for your candidates here in the school? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we actually very, very prepared. We believe that we've done the best that we can. And I can confidently say that our candidates are indeed very, very prepared. They are really confident because we've made sure that uh, they do a variety of exams before. So that to really build the confidence and we believe they are really, really prepared. How many of them do you have and have you had any challenges where some are not able to sit for this exam examination? Thank you so much. We're having a total of uh, 228 candidates. Uh, fortunately, we've not had any challenge and all of them are with us here. All the 228 are going to write their papers with us. And uh, the minister came out yesterday to say that there should be no any school that denies a candidate exam. Do you see this affect you in any way, one or the other? Okay, indeed, uh, we must follow the directives from the Ministry of Education. And uh, like I've said, we are not stopping any candidate. They're all going to do the exams with us. Why? Yes, we've had issues of school fees. There are a few, about three, who have not yet cleared. But what we did, we invited the parents prior, and uh, we went into an agreement with them, and we've come up with a payment schedule. So we agreed with them how they will pay, but uh, all of them are with us. We are not stopping any. And um, mathematics paper one will be here. Do you see maybe also other challenges perhaps with the rest of other, uh, can, let me say senior six, but how are you preparing them so that the vice is cut? Well, thank you so much. Uh, like I said, uh, our preparation begins much earlier. Actually, now the Form 4s are starting. Already preparations, we have embarked on the Form 6. So we believe that by the time they also get to that time, they will also be very set. How are we doing it? We are equally exposing them to a variety of exams. We are creating uh, a very conducive environment to them for revision. We are making sure that they are in school daily, so they are attending school every day. And we have been able to do that because we are in direct touch with our parents. Our teachers have done a commendable job. So indeed, the preparations are good. Some instances we see when results come back, some schools whose results are, are being withheld by UNEB due to malpractice and the rest. How are you doing to overcome this, especially caution onto the land? Okay, thank you. We have uh, a very professional team of teachers, and uh, they are the ones that have really spearheaded this. Definitely, we've talked to the learners time and time again, cautioning them of anything to do with malpractice, and we are very confident because we have taught them. Malpractice usually comes in if the students are not well prepared. 
but with the preparations we've made, the guidance from the teachers, the school administration, the head teacher in particular, she has done a commendable job. I want to give you 30 seconds to speak to your maybe parents who are now at home because they're now giving an eye on to you. Okay. You, are, you, are, you have the mandate to drive their okay. uh, children here. I actually wish to thank the Almighty God, first of all, for such a moment. I also wish to thank the parents who entrusted us with their children. And I want to tell them and commit that indeed we are doing our best as the Entebbe Secondary School to shape their, their children, to shape our children, just like our motto is, we build for the future. Well, for time reasons, we'll leave it here, but thank you very much for making time to speak to us. You're welcome, sir. Thank well, you so much for coming around. Okay. Isaac Baguma is the deputy head teacher of uh, Entebbe Senior Secondary School, just painting for us a picture of what the preparations are like. But where I'm standing, of course, there is an assembly, part of the preparations, mindset for the learners that is currently being uh, conducted. But I, like I earlier said from... Uh, the uh, district uh, education offices that uh, they have not had any challenges perhaps or anything to do with having candidates denied exams uh, all of them have to sit for the examinations but also keeping track and see what happens on ground in case of anything won't stand by to let our audience know for time reasons i want to come back to the studios a very good morning to you and our audience Well, there you are, pictures there. Of course, uh, before we went into that short break uh, from uh, Kololo Aces, where a senior for students, candidates to be specific, are uh, due to begin writing their first paper of the Uganda Certificate of Education exam. Let's now return to studio. And uh, my guests, uh, Frank Kabuye, MP for Kassanda South, as well as uh, Pasco Mbabazi, MP for Bwekula uh, County, the two one of the two uh, constituencies that are in the districts that are under lockdown right now as instituted by the president as part of measures to halt the spread of uh, Ebola. Of course, we've been hearing what the situation is on the ground and exactly what is being done to ensure that uh, Ebola is halted in its tracks. But also concerns have risen on the conduct of the security forces in enforcement of the lockdown by the president. The overzealousness apparently is also affecting how residents are coping with an already difficult uh, situation there. I won't uh, delve into that again, but uh, on to close this uh, discussion on the note of the exams that are going on across Kassanda and uh, Buwekula, have you been able to ensure that uh, some of the schools do not harass students, especially those whose parents have been unable uh, to complete uh, the school fees within time for this particular exam? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chris. First of all, I would like to thank the district uh, because uh, under the Department of Education, the Secretary of Education at District, Mr. Chisanja, mm. who have been in touch, he has moved the orders to, to all the schools, public schools in my constituency, like uh, St. Andrea Kawa in Madudu sub-county, uh, Butologo City Secondary School, and the uh, Chioni Secondary School. Those are, uh, are secondary schools under government. Uh, so he has he has been on ground and mm. been in touch. Actually, he even took trouble to to to, to move to other private schools, also taking the crusade of how they can control uh, Ebola outbreak in this examination period. Mm. So uh, in his discussion with the stakeholders, he encouraged them not to to 
to deny uh, the students and pupils oh, okay. who have not yet cleared with the school fees mm. and other issues at school. So uh, I'm, hopeful, uh, uh, I'm hopeful uh, this exercise is going to, to, to move smoothly in my constituency, given that there mm -hmm. is this outbreak. Uh, I want also to thank UNICEF. It has donated some washing materials mm. that shall be put at put the gate. To. Whoever enters has to first clean his... Those are SOPs. Yes. All right, uh, thank you, Honorable Pasco Mbabazi. I'm afraid, Honorable Frank Kabuye, I will be very, very dictatorial for today. And, of course, <laughs> because of time constraints in light of uh, what is happening. But I do uh, appreciate your time and uh, sharing your insights and perspective on what's happening in uh, your constituencies. That's it uh, for this edition of uh, Morning at NTV. My guests have been Frank Kabuye, Honorable MP for Cassander South, as well as Pasco Mbabazi, Honorable MP for Buwekula County 1. Or some of the constituencies <coughs> excuse me, that are grappling with the latest outbreak of Ebola and are under lockdown as instituted by the president. That will do it for now. Have yourselves a glorious day. I'll see you tomorrow. This is Morning at NTV.